streamers, if you like worker movement in a rondelle and a neon glow look, then you're going to want to check out Metro Runner. Let's take a look at how it plays. In this game, players will be moving around the city board, trying to do some hacking, complete some jobs, and ultimately score the most points. On a player's turn, they will first move and then complete at least one action. There is possibilities for completing more if they have the resources to do so, but Mainly, they're going to be taking one action, and then they will go into their cleanup phase where they'll make sure that they don't have too many resources that they can hold. So, first thing you can do is move one or two spaces. If you want to move more than that, you'll just have to pay cubes. You can pay one card a turn to move an extra space, um, or you can pay one credit in order to move anywhere on the board, including staying in the same space. So, if I'm the red player, maybe I will move two spaces and pick up some more job cards. You do start the game with one of your own color job card and then one random job card and a couple of different resource cubes as well and one credit. So I can pick from the offer here or from the top of the deck. I'm going to take two jobs from the top of the deck and just hope that they are what I want. I got another one of my colors, so that's pretty good as well. Um, and then the next player would go and keep going around. Um, as players are going to be moving around the board, they'll be able to get more cubes and then they can also take Instead of the action that they land on, players can also choose to take one of the district actions, which would be either taking a color of cube of the district that they're in or completing a job of the correct color. If they are on one of these spots, like the purple player is here, that touches two districts, they can complete a job of either color or subsequently take the cube of either color as well. As players complete jobs, they will tuck them under their boards, which will get them a couple of bonuses. Um, they can only store three cards under each one of the spots here. They'll get some bonuses on the jobs as they complete them as well, and then hopefully get some points um, as well as potentially some ongoing abilities as well. For instance, if I had this job tucked here, then every time I got a black cube, I would get an additional black cube um, anytime that I was collecting those. As players are scoring their jobs and doing some hacking on the board, they will be moving up these various tracks, which the top one here will allow them to unlock these little things here, which will allow them to get more rewards from the hacking. Um, the hacking will change as players complete the cards, they'll rotate out, but they always have to com connect the green to the green. This one's a pretty easy one, um, but then if they've unlocked these squares on their boards, they will be able to also try and go for these as well to get these additional rewards here. And the hacking will usually let them move up on this bottom track here, which just increases how many cubes they can take when they land on these cube spots on the board. The game will end when somebody has completed nine jobs, when somebody has crossed over this line on either of the tracks there, or when the job deck, not the offer, is completely empty. And then players will add up their score to see who wins. They'll get points from their job cards. Um, they'll get some points from uh, if they completed the most of their own color. They'll get points for where they are on each of these tracks and a couple points for leftover resources potentially as well. And the player with the most points wins. I really enjoyed my time with this game. I liked moving around the board, even though that part of the game was pretty simple. The actions that you can take where you land are relatively simple. You'll get a couple of cubes, maybe you'll get a couple of jobs. Um, the really interesting action is the hacking, where you're gonna be moving the tiles around in the middle of the board in order to try and connect those um, green to green or potentially some of the other ones after you've unlocked that ability. But that can definitely bog down the game. If you're somebody who is not good at visual puzzles or seeing things quickly, you might end up having a lot of like analysis paralysis while you're looking at that puzzle, really slowing down the game. I definitely saw that in a lot of my games. I definitely was the culprit of that in a lot of my games. Um, and it can be really frustrating for others at the table, but it can also be frustrating as that player. Um, just knowing that you're kind of holding things up a little bit um, it is, just something that you can't really fix if you're just not somebody who can see those puzzles very quickly. Um, that said, if you are somebody who can see them quickly and you play with people who can also see them quickly, then I think that it's just a really, really cool mechanic in the game overall.
I like just the simplicity of the game as a whole, but just the variety of actions that you can do, whether it is doing the hacking or focusing more on just collecting your cubes to turn in the jobs. I think that both are very viable strategies and I really enjoyed that part of it. Um, it is also really possible for somebody to just shoot up one of the tracks if they are really good at the hacking and able to do it really often. Somebody can go really fast and the game really, really quickly, which can be good or bad. It really depends on how you look at it. Um, it may, might give other players not a lot of opportunity to score points, but it can just make a lot of things on the board a lot more competitive, trying to block those spots from players or just do the hacking yourself, even if it does take a little bit longer to get to that point. But overall, I thought it was really cool. I also enjoyed the solo mode. Um, it didn't have a lot of upkeep, which I really like, and it was really smooth to just figure out what to do on the AI's turn um, based on the card that came out. So I really enjoyed how smooth that play was as well. So if you like visual puzzles and if you like pretty simple action selection, moving around that rondelle, then you're definitely going to want to check this one out. But you can see my full thoughts on the blog today to decide if this one's for you.